That's one of the things that distinguishes me from some of the other contenders for the Republican nomination. This economy is on life support. And we know it is on life support because there is a fundamental economic principle that this administration does not get. And that is, the economic engine of this economy is the business sector, not government. <laughs> to spend a trillion dollars, and it didn't work, is like put, putting a trillion dollars in the caboose of this train. And since that didn't work so well, this president is proposing another $450 billion to go in the caboose. You knew it wouldn't work. I knew it wouldn't work. Every family in America knew it wouldn't work. But this is why we have the mess that we have. This president and his administration are determined to do it their way, which is the wrong way. And this is why in 2012, you and I are going to tell this president to hit the highway. crisis is this economy. It doesn't do any good to keep arguing about what you're going to cut, when you're going to cut, and how you're going to cut it, if we're not growing this economy. And the irony is, this economy does have the potential for growth. So as I watched what was going on and studied the situation for the last several years, even before I thought about running for president, decided that because this economy is on life support, we need a bold solution. Not something tinkering around the edges. And that's why we developed the economic growth and jobs plan that starts with, starts with, throw out the current tax code. <laughs> and then replace it with a plan that we have called 999. 9% business flat tax, 9% personal income flat tax, and a 9% national sales tax. We have already had it scored statically and dynamically. It will replace, not on top of, replace the corporate income tax, the personal income tax, the capital gains tax, the payroll tax, and the death tax, all with 999. And when we set out to develop this bold plan, we had five criteria. First, we wanted it to be simple, 999. <laughs> Secondly, we wanted it to be transparent. There are no hidden lines. <laughs> Name the three of them. <laughs> We wanted it to be efficient. We spend collectively $430 billion a year filing and complying with the tax code. Imagine that $430 billion staying in our bank accounts rather than have to spend it just to stay out of jail. wanted it to be fair, not according to Washington's definition of fair, not you, Senator, not you, Congressman. <laughs> we do have some good guys there, but they need some help. <laughs> we wanted it to be fair. Washington's definition of fair is totally different than ours. The definition of fair that we used in developing 999 comes from Webster's Dictionary. 
everybody gets treated the same. What a novel idea. All businesses get treated the same. No loopholes, no special exemptions except for those that are at or below the poverty level. That's why we have a provision in there called 909. So if you are at or below the poverty level, your middle nine becomes a zero. And the media tried to say that I modified my plan, that I backtracked when I got attacked in the last debate. John Hannity asked me the other night when I did his show, how does it feel to be at the top of the polls? Well, that bullseye on my back just got heavier and bigger. <laughs> But they attacked me from the left, from the right, every which way, and none of it was true. Deflected all of it the best you can when you only got 30 seconds to respond. But one of the ways they were saying, it's going to be regressive on the pool. No, it's not. And I said in the debate, you all didn't read the plan. You didn't read the entire analysis. Well, it's going to be regressive on the pool. In fact, some hit liberal organization put out a press release one hour before the debate saying that it was going to raise taxes on 80% of the population, which was a flat out lie. Because if you read that report, they admit at the end that they changed the assumptions. They changed the assumptions. And when they accused me of not looking out for the poor, and I said, you hadn't read it. I said, you, you hadn't read it. It was right there all along. And so one reporter said, well, if it was there all along, why didn't you talk about that when you first started talking about your 999 plan? I didn't want to. <laughs> it's my plan. It's not the media's plan. <laughs> and the other thing is, I knew they were going to say that. I could have proposed a tax plan. Zero, zero, zero for everybody. They would have said, it's regressive on the poor. <laughs> so I waited until they attacked me on that. And I said, go read the rest of the plan. Because it is not regressive on the poor. And the thing that it's going to do is going to liberate this economy. It's going to liberate the entrepreneurial spirit in this country. And we're going to get this economy growing again the way it can and the way it should. I'm not going to go through all of my policy positions and all of the solutions we put on the table tonight. Many of you all can find them on the website. But it's just to illustrate that if we're working on the right problem, that we're assigning the right priority. If you surround yourself with good people, you're gonna to put together the right plans in order to fix stuff. Nothing is getting fixed in Washington, D.C. by this administration. And when they had Democrat control of the House and the Senate. When was the last time something got fixed? Time's up. <laughs> Senator Santorum said two debates ago, well, Herman's plan can't pass. And I said, Senator, therein lies the difference between a professional politician and a businessman problem solver. You propose stuff, I mean, you propose stuff that you think you can get passed. <laughs> Businessmen propose stuff to fix the problem. We need problems fixed. 